Hello and welcome to the next video in my Esperanto 101 series, Pronunciation. Now we talked about the pronunciation of individual letters of the alphabet in the last video. Make sure you've watched that video. But now we're going to talk about diphthongs, which are combinations of vowels and semi-vowels, and we're going to put entire words together. So diphthongs. Diphthongs are when a vowel is followed by a glide sound or a semi-vowel sound. These are the sounds y and w. They're sort of kind of half vowels. They're very similar to the vowels e and u. And in fact, if you say a vowel followed by e or u, you get a bit of a diphthong. So in English, although we are taught in grammar school as little kids that the word high contains the long I sound, linguistically that's really considered a diphthong. Imagine saying this, the vowel ah, and then follow it with the vowel e. Hi. 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 Now, for the long a sound in English, like in the word hey, take the vowel eh and follow it with e. A. Hey. For koi, the oi sound in English, you can take the vowel o and follow it with e. Oi. Oi. Koi. And finally, for the sound out, it's really like taking the a, even though we write it with an o in English, it's really like taking the sound ah, like in father, like the Esperanto letter a, and following it with the u. Au. Ow, out. So you see, these vowels that we think of as simple vowels in English really work like diphthongs. There are six diphthongs you'll encounter in Esperanto. Four of them end with the E part of the glide, which we represent with the glide letter J, the Y sound, and two of them and with the U, which we represent with the W sounding letter, the U with a breve. So, I, A, Oi, Ui, Au, Eu. Let's go through them one more time. I'll give you a chance to say each following me. I, a, oi, ui, au, eu. And one more time, since these are such important sounds. I, a, oi, ui, Ow. Ew. Now the ui and ew are kind of rare. They're not found in as many words. The others are much more common. In order to pronounce a word correctly, you also need to know where the stress is in the word. Which syllable gets the emphasis? In English, there are words that are very similar except for their stress. So present and present. But in Esperanto, it's much simpler. The stress syllable of an Esperanto word, if it has more than one syllable, is always the penultimate syllable. The next to the last syllable always gets the stress. So let's look at a couple examples. The name of the language itself. Esperanto. It's not Esperanto or Esperanto. It's Esperanto. And then there's the Esperanto word for keyboard. Clavaro. It's not Clavaro. It's Clavaro. 
So now we'll do some pronunciation exercises by reading some words. We'll start with words that have the most basic consonant and vowel sounds. Bona. Bona. Which means good. Think of the English word bonus if you're not familiar with it in French where it would be bon or in Latin where it's bonus. Bona. Tago. Tago. It means day. It comes from the German word for day, which is tag. You've probably heard the expression guten tag, good day. Tago. Hundo. Hundo. It means dog. The German word for dog is hund, and it sounds like the English alternative word, hound. Hundo. Ebla. Ebla. Possible. It looks sort of like the suffix at the end of possible or learnable or lovable, right? Ebla. Shipo. Shipo. It means ship, like a boat. This one actually looks like the English word. Shipo. The Esperanto word for yes sounds exactly like the English word yes, except it's spelled with the J since that's what makes that sound in Esperanto. Yes. 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 The Esperanto word for no is simply ne. 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 Great. Now let's say some more difficult words. More difficult because they contain those diphthongs we learned earlier. The verb for to type is pronounced typey. 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 The word for home, as opposed to just any old house, is pronounced hamo. 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 The word for cats, now notice I underline the stress syllable. I'm not underlining the syllable necessarily that contains the diphthong. The word for cats is katoi. 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 The plural version of who or which, like in a sentence like, these are the ones who you like, is kiwi, kiwi, kiwi. The word for also or to, like I love you too or I'm going as well, that word is pronounced ankau, ankau, ankau. The word for neutral contains that rare ew diphthong. Neutrala. 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 Excellent. Now we'll try some words that contain some clusters of sounds that might be unusual for an English speaker. Here's one where we start with that weird Esperanto letter C. Remember, it sounds like T-S at the beginning of the word Tsar. Centra. 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 It means central. Centra. The Esperanto word for language is lingvo. 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 The Esperanto word for water is akvo, 
Akvo. Akvo. Now, if you notice, lingvo comes from the Latin lingua, which means language, or tongue, for that matter. And aquo comes from the Latin word aqua, which means water. So you can see that Zamenhof thought that the qua cluster in English would be hard for other speakers, and so he replaced it with kv, which many English speakers find a little bit difficult. This word is a fine example. The word for the number five is kvin. Kvin. That's a little tricky to pronounce that at the beginning of a word if you're an English speaker and you're not used to the cluster. But again, think of the English word quintuple. It comes from the Latin quinque, which was the name for the number five. But in Esperanto, it's kvin. Kvin. Another word with a strange cluster at the beginning is the Esperanto word for boy. Remember, there are no silent letters in Esperanto. That means that K is pronounced. In English, you might think that would be nabo, but nope, it's pronounced knabo. Knabo. It comes from the same root as the English word knave, K-N-A-V-E. Knabo. Now let's do a few more words, some longer words, just to put it, this all together. Samlingvano. This is a person who speaks the same language as someone else. They are a samlingvano of the other person, like a fellow countryman or a co-religionist. We have samlingvano. Samlingvano. Misunderstandings, you might recognize in the middle of this word, it looks like the word comprehend. Oh, well, that's the same Latin root. Miscomprenoi. 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 Finally, the name that Dr. Zamenhof gave to the language in the first place. International language. Internatia lingvo. Internatia lingvo. Internatia lingvo. In our next video, we'll look at the basics of grammar for Esperanto nouns, adjectives, and how they come from root words. Thanks for watching.